Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over the most recent infight, and that is Devoured Horizons. Now, unless I'm forgetting something, this is probably the most difficult fight we've gotten since Chaos Slayers. Uh, on release night, it was insanely hard. Um, probably like Swan Song or Swan Song Extreme tier, but then it received uh, several swift and severe nerfs but it's still got a reward to match 10 all helm good mpm really good bpd the second best bpd helm in terms of bpd value but for all intents and purposes it is the best bpd helm because it has 10 all and not negative 40 all like the drop bear helms do and then it's also the best bonus helm outclassing the dragon visor which also has 20 bonus but doesn't have 10 all and doesn't have the rest of these stats either so going into it we'll start with the proto symbiote who is very unique uh, and you see these four proteans here which is what makes him so unique so every five turns the symbiote will absorb all the proteans on the field and heal for 50% of their combined health values. Uh, this is a set HP heal, so there's nothing you can do about it uh, in terms of plus health. But something to keep in mind is that for each protean above 50% HP, the symbiote actually gets buffs. So you want to try to get them below 50% HP which is why multis are really valuable here. And you want to keep in mind that killing them is bad. You might want to try to kill them at first. However, this is usually really inefficient because uh, each one has a death rattle that, that deals 30% of your current health as well as applies minus 20 all and minus 60 defenses and avoidance. So killing them is a really good way to destroy your own defenses and do a lot of damage to yourself. So that's why you only really want to get them below half so the symbiote doesn't get his buffs. And they are also stunnable, although multi-stuns are kind of not really um, functional, <laughs> so you might not always stun all four of them, like that. The symbiote himself um, isn't super threatening, he has two forms, he starts in sturdy form, so 200 strength, 100 bonus, minus 400 crit, which is good for uh, BPD classes because you're guaranteed to block and 30% damage reduction. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, he has a Yala shield, um, which is basically what we refer to when a boss gets resistance to an element per hit. So you can see I hit him once with darkness from my dragon, plus two, and twice um, or I believe it's actually plus one per, per hit. Yeah, it's plus one per hit. So having two weapons that you switch between can be good. Um, you know, if you have apotheosis, you can just click it. So that's convenient. But let's get to the recombination. He also has a couple of nasty debuffs to watch out for. Um, 
and now he switches forms, you'll see Protoss Symbiote's HP was adjusted. So adjusted means basically you can't plus health him. However, one thing to note, after he switches forms, all the Proteans are gone, right? But for each time you hit him, he will spawn a Protean. So if you're a multi-hit class, this, you know, isn't really <laughs> the best thing. Um, now, when the Proteans spawn, they actually are affected by the Protoss Symbio's health resistance. So this is a good way, if your class has access to large amounts of plus health, like Techno, or even using Dragon Tickles or other abilities, you can actually get a head start on the Proteans or just invalidate them entirely and never have to deal with them. So I'll show you in the Howard Adventures. So it spawns one per hit, maximum four, and they spawn with less health. Because of that, um, that 30 extra health resistance. And then, that's about all there is to the Protean. Um, usually, you know, if you're a burst class, you just want to wait the five turns. You use your multi a couple times if it's a low cooldown. Get the Proteans low, and then just burst in right after he loses the damage resistance. So I'll show you what happens when you kill one as well. Also, turns take really long because each one has to play its animation, which is a little bit annoying. Alright, so if we kill one, you see instantly my health drop, the defeated Protean expels corrosive enzymes, and I have Exocytosis, minus 20 all, minus 60 defenses and organs for 3 turns. This is per Protean, so it stacks. And then, each Protean also gets Catalyzation Boosts. Uh, this will update at the start of their turn. As long as I don't die here, that is. You see they're doing more damage now, they're doing about 30 damage before. And this is kind of just to make up for the dead ones. So it's plus 33 boost and bonus. Um, this is not per Protean defeated, so it goes from 33 with one dead, to 100 with two dead, to 300 with three dead. So we can get out of hand pretty quickly, and this is why we pretty much want to avoid killing them. You also cannot dodge Exocytosis by any means. It's a, it's also a set HP. All right, moving on to the serpent. The serpent was actually the um, kind of the main culprit of the release night nerfs. It's quite tanky, or at least it appears to be quite tanky. But then you'll notice it has minus 100 fear good and evil resistance so this 25,800 hp is really more like around 13,000 hp which is really actually more than that because you'll notice he has a permanent heal over time effect however you can still do a lot of damage to him because obviously the best weapon in the game is good does good and evil damage the other best weapon in the game does a lot of evil damage so, the snake has two main mechanics. One is solar scales, and the other is constricted. So you'll see I'm constricted right now, which is a permanent effect, and it's minus two all and minus five avoidance and defense per turn you're afflicted by constricted, and you can remove it by stunning serpent. Now stunning it doesn't actually stun the serpent, it just removes constricted, but he won't be actually stunned. And then 
Yeah, a dot on turn two. I'm not removing it right now because I want to show another mechanic that happens on turn three. And you'll notice that the heal over time is getting less each turn, which I'll explain in a bit. So you'll see turn three comes with Crushing Tangle. So Crushing Tangle is a permanent dot that you get afflicted with if you get hit by the third attack the while constricted. And you can just remove this by stunning. Then you see I'm no longer constricted. Serpent, also no longer constricted. And you see here the solar scales, I've been letting solar scales charge up. So as solar scales charges up over 50, the serpent gets more offensive. So it has plus 60 health, it's plus 20 health per 10 over 50, so the heal over time becomes less, as well as plus 60 boost points and crit, and you die at 100. And there is nothing you can do about that, which is why I'm going to show here. And yeah, you just die. It has, um, you know, a little, a little bit of damage, just a little bit. Ten thousand bonus, you know, not much. Uh, as well as a null dot for classes with death proof. So managing solar scales is really key here, and the way to do that is with darkness damage. So let's say I were to equip a darkness weapon. And let's just get it down to zero. See how I missed those last two hits? So when solar scales is below 50, the serpent gets more defensive. So that means minus health for more healing, as well as more defenses. And you'll see the heal is now double what it was. So instead of being 129, it's 158. But other than that, the serpent is not super complicated. It's on a fixed rotation. The only things you have to keep in mind are managing solar scales, which you can do really easily with your dragon. Just, you know, have your dragon on darkness and just hit it. As well as constriction, which is also really easy to manage. If your class has a stun, you just stun it. If you don't want to waste a turn using the stun and you'd rather do something else, you can just have your dragon use dragon fumes, which will also remove it. You only need one point in it. Obviously not at zero constriction, or not at zero um, solar scales though, because then it might miss. As far as the duo goes, while I have done it, uh, I did it with Chaos Weaver as well as a couple other classes. It kind of depends who you want to kill first. If your class has good plus health and you can kind of invalidate the Proteans, then killing the serpent first is pretty good. Killing Protus first is also fine. He has some nasty debuffs. And um, he also is obviously a lot squishier. So it depends on your class. I would say the main things to keep in mind though are just make sure you manage solar scales with your dragon. Even if you're killing Protus first, you can just hit the Serpent every turn with your Dragon. Try not to kill the Proteans, just get them below half HP. And one last thing, the fight only does Metal and Darkness damage. So that makes 
the following items very helpful. There's not a lot you can do about stacking metal in darkness, but there is the clock and cloak clasp, which has very good offensive stats. It's one of the best offensive necklaces from the story. It's 13 darkness and 13 metal. So this is helpful. And then there is also the high commander helm, which has, you know, kind of whatever stats. For some reason, it has really good MPM for a level 80 story helm, uh, an old level 80 story helm, I should say, as well as 12 darkness, 12 metal, and minus four health for the extra healing. However, this helm is awful to farm uh, because it's from Espino Rosa. You're playing as Ed, you're playing base warrior with only metal damage against monsters that have metal resistance for some reason. So it's a terrible experience. If you're playing a good class, um, you don't need to farm this. I actually, I would go as far as to say don't farm this because it's miserable and there's three drops from the quest, so you're not even guaranteed the High Commander Helm. As far as good classes goes, I know that Wrath Dragonlord has a really good time with this because of uh, Empowered Breath multi being an auto crit, and so you're basically guaranteed to get the Proteans below half HP. Ranger in particular is super notable because of Sky Assault. I believe it's two Sky Assaults will get the Proteans to very low HP. And it also does the fight in like 20 or 25 turns, which is ridiculously quick. Um, so yeah, the two main classes I would recommend, Wrath Dragon Lord and Ranger. Other classes like Technomancer has done it, but Technomancer is a little bit difficult. Death Knight has a pretty... Not easy, but not super difficult time either. Um, if you want to use Paladin before it gets nerfed, Paladin can just sleep through it because it's Paladin. However, a class like Pirate is not going to have a very good time because Pirate's multi is awful. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to Devoured Horizons. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, definitely leave a comment and I'll try to be as helpful as I can. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.